Hey guys, Ken here from the Retro Thoracic Base channel in Malaysia. On the channel today, we're checking out the Moto Origins Wave 12 Tongue Lash Shaw action figure. The only legitimate Snake Man figure in a full Snake Man themed wave. On the back of the card, you see Tongue Lash Shaw in combat with Cyclone. The artwork was circulating online as of a few weeks ago, and a lot of fans started to get really excited when they saw Cyclone. I mean, I think he's okay, but a lot of people seem to really like him. The artwork is a homage to the vintage cardback art where Tang Lashaw appears to also have a real hard-on for Cyclone. I mean, just look at this illustration right here. He's literally about to lick the back of Cyclone's neck. I think if Cyclone ever gets produced as an Origins figure, which he most likely will, then he's going to be a higher-priced deluxe package. Unless they are terminating his vintage Cyclone spinning action feature, which they could, but then again, he also comes with a lenticular effect shield, and that's got to be expensive, right? The set comes with a brand new mini comic, Assassin's Aim. During a recent live stream on Instagram by Collecting Classics, writer Joshua Sky read the entire comic to everyone who was tuning in. The video is still on the page, so go check it out. I tagged Joshua in a question and asked him something that I've always wondered about when it comes to these new mini comics. Just why is it that they don't have any of the writer and artist credits mentioned in the book? Doesn't the creative team need recognition as well? Anyway, I'm still waiting for clarification on that. But as readers, we always do wonder and we take note of who's writing and drawing the comics that we read. As far as reptilian snake monster hybrid creatures go, Tang Lashaw sure is colourful. In fact, He's the most colorful soldier in King Hiss's entire army of snake men. With a combination of purple, pink, orange, green, white, black, and yellow, he looks like he walked into an exploding warehouse full of Skittles candy. Tang Lashaw features a lot of newly tooled parts for Origins, such as his unique head design, his new chest section, hands, and feet. I would say the sculpt work on his face looks absolutely fantastic. From certain angles, he looks like he could be almost friendly looking. The front section of his face is made of very hard and sturdy plastic. The rear of his head is slightly more flexible but not by a whole lot. There's very good ball joint rotation of the head which surprised me due to the more unique head design but somehow they pulled it off. I really like how the detailing on his chest section turned out as well as how the raised snake man emblem in the center looks. Now, a lot of people have commented about how Tang Lashaw looks more like a frog monster than an actual snake man, especially when you look at things like the design of his three-fingered hands. However, these hands are not similar to those of the recently released Metal Creations exclusive frog manga figure. They look to be totally different. Even his webbed feet will get you thinking of something like a mutant frog monster lurking in the swamps. Anyway, he could just be something that's equal parts frog, lizard, and snake, just the ultimate slimy combination. But you know what, it's fine because whatever he is, he's still looking fine either way. Now on the back of the figure, there's also some great detailing here, but the back section here has also been the source of some controversy because a lot of fans wanted them to paint the stripes here just like they did with the vintage figure. I also discussed this in a previous video. It was in fact only the first few releases of the vintage Tang Lashaw figure that had the stripes painted. The later releases apparently did not. I had a vintage figure back in the day. I can't remember if you ask me now whether the stripes were painted or not. But honestly, to me, uh, it's not such a big deal. I'm okay with it looking like the way it is. There's so much of paint applications elsewhere on the figure that I think that, you know, if they just decided to leave this section empty, it's okay. I'm not going to be spending a lot of time staring at the monsters behind, okay? So <laughs> not even the way that he's displayed in my collection. So I'm okay with this. Uh, and overall, like I said, even with this whole section being unpainted, there's still a lot of great detailing here to look at. Now, weapons check. Okay, first of all, he comes with the Serpent Staff. Now, this is the same staff that comes with both the King His and Ratlaw Origins figures. I don't have those figures just yet because they haven't turned up in Malaysia. But uh, based on the photos I've seen and also based on what the vintage figures did, it's the same mold. Then he also comes with the classic Dragonfly Crossbow Weapon. You know, I never really got what the Dragonfly Crossbow was supposed to be. Uh, is it like a giant dragonfly that got reshaped into a crossbow? I don't know. But either way, yeah, it's looking good. It's pretty sinister as well. And uh, it's a good accessory, okay, for Tang Lashaw, right? So he's just merging with everything, like even with insects, okay? All right, he's got like an insect handheld weapon. Lastly, you've got the attachable tongue, all right? And this thing is actually, well, a little bit more 
harder than I thought it would be. It's not so flimsy. Um, the material here is pretty good. And it's also got the paint shading effect at the end of the forked tongue, which is great okay, because we seldom see the usage of paint shading in Motu figures. The only other times have been the tail that was used for Ratlaw and also the wings on the Wave 7 Sorcerers. Okay, so all you got to do here is just attach the tongue right into Tongue Lashaw's mouth. Okay, just like that, all right? And once it's in there, he's ready, okay, to get into tongue striking, venom spreading mode. Alternately, you could also attach the tongue the other way because, you know, it seems to be curved upwards in this way. And uh, yeah, just for a different pose, I guess, right? Just follow the curve of the tongue and then you get him close to his intended victim, right? Whoever it might be and get him into striking position. What? No! Wretched thing. You never even bought me a drink. Ugh. Now, I wish I still had my vintage Tang Lashaw figure to use as a comparison for the video, but I mentioned it in a couple of other videos previously that I sold it off a couple of years ago like maybe about 10 years ago, back when I wasn't really sure if I wanted to keep an entire range of vintage Moto figures. So, you know, I mean, I sold off some of the Snake Man and uh, that was a mistake, okay? What can I say? Either way, I'm hoping to get the rest of the Snake Man that are out there, the Wave 11 figures like Ratlaw and Cobra Khan. I believe that, you know, look, even though they've omitted the action features, which honestly just sucks okay but at the same time they've maintained a very high level of quality when it comes to the presentation of these snake man figures everything from the sculpting to the paint apps to the accessories everything else is kept at an optimum level of quality especially with tongue lash right here i don't even have to try and sell you on this okay you can just look at the video that i've presented to you right here the way that tongue lash is depicted in this video of mine Okay, to see the level of premium quality that you're getting. Anyway, guys, I want to hear your thoughts on the video. What do you guys think about Tang Lashaw from Moto Origins Wave 12? How excited are you for this entire wave of Moto figures? Hit me up in the comments, let me know, and I'll catch you guys again real soon with more content right here. Thank you, and take care out there.